Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video and today I'm going to bring you 20 useful tips and tricks about a game that every newbie and veteran out there should know about. Hey everyone! So, as you probably know, Fallout 76 has been on discount for many countries and a lot of new players have been joining the servers. That's very noticeable, special in Adventure Mode. But that's not all. Many old players have returned to the game with Wild Appalachia DLC and also the Nuclear Winter Mode. So, I decided to make this compilation of useful tips and tricks to help everyone out there, so you should be using them no matter what, because they only bring benefits to you. In fact, some of them can really avoid a lot of hassle for you and keep your nerves together. Let's start with the very basics, shall we? The first point is probably the most straightforward one, but I feel like a lot of people don't know about this or they forget, but coming to your camp, to your workshops or to Vault 76 costs no caps, so you can travel between Appalachia pretty much for free if you have your camp and workshops far from Vault 76 and you use them to kind of triangle your way around the world. Just save your caps, you will probably need them later. Something else that is really helpful but you are probably forgetting or you are not so aware is your bed and musical instruments in your camp. They are not just there for decoration, if you add them to your base, you can actually get bonuses for 1 and 2 hours if you actually, well, sleep and play the music instruments. For sleeping, you get 5% more experience gain over 2 hours, so you don't have to do this that often unless you are playing the entire day. For the music, it only lasts 1 hour and you get stamina regeneration, just a little boost, but everything helps in Fallout 76, so do not waste these precious buffs, especially if you are trying to level up, 5% really makes a difference. What about your Pip-Boy features? I read many comments of people asking how can they check their Pioneer Scott badges, for example, or how much script they have without checking the script machines. Well, here you go. All you have to do is go to Stat and then select Collections at the very end. This tab has been added a few months ago and you can see all your currencies in this little tab. You don't have to go anywhere. All you have to do is open your Pip-Boy. It is that simple. Now, to check the in-game time, you have to go to Data, the main category, and then you can see the in-game time in all the sub-tabs for missions and side missions, dailies, and so on. The time is right there. So, if you have any event or challenge to do at a specific time, this is a really good information to know. Now, let's talk about your junk tab. It's like a mystery to me and one of the features I have recently found out myself and it's about the component view, which basically virtually dismantles each object in your junk for you. It allows you to understand what raw materials you will be able to get when you actually scrap everything. It's pretty handy to understand what you are farming, but that's not everything you can find in the junk tab. You can also target specific raw materials like steel or plastic. If you want to farm them, then just press enter to enable this magnifying glass at the end of the material and then in the world you will also see a magnifying glass icon near items that contain the materials that you wish to find. It's very handy because you don't need to inspect uh, stuff to see if they actually give you plastic or steel when you scrap them, so it saves you a lot of time. 
Do you often face inventory issues? Well, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks on how to solve that for a short moment. The first tip is with your power armor. And if you are slightly over encumbered, let's say up to 10 weights, all you have to do is deploy your power armor and you will earn 10 free inventory space for a very short moment, of course, but that's enough to go away to some other area through fast traveling but you need to wait a few seconds until it actually works as you can see i wasn't able to teleport the first time because it didn't register yet but the second time it updated and i was able to fast travel anyway as soon as i do that my power armor will return to me and i will be over encumbered again so i suggest you to head to a vendor when you try this trick Something else you can do though, and I also didn't know about this one since very recently, is to drop your gear until you are not over encumbered anymore, then select fast travel around enemies, which will trigger this countdown, and then pick up everything in the last second. And because the system takes a little bit to update, you will be able to fast travel, because to the system you are not over encumbered yet, but as soon as you get your new location, you will be over encumbered again and with all the items that you had before. So that's a really good trick. It's the same logic as the power armor and it allows you to get somewhere else if you really need to. The third trick to manage your inventory space when you are over encumbered is to drink things with strength that's right this one also stacks with the power armor and it's very handy i use it all the time because i often have drinks in my inventory with strength and per one strength you get five inventory space you can actually triple this result with the perk let me show you another trick inside the trick which is a party boy or party girl it will triple the effects of alcohol and that means you can get up to 15 more inventory space with a single drink with one strength. With the perk will be three strength. And that's really awesome because that means with the power armor you can get 25 or more inventory space. That's plenty to be able to fast travel anywhere else when you are just slightly over encumbered. But if you really, really struggle with inventory problems, then maybe you should do like me and carry off your storage with you. I can carry over 400 inventory space at all times with me. And that's because I use deep pocket and all my armor pieces. Each one gives you 10 carry weight and with five pieces means I have 50 carry weight but that's not everything with the backpack and the high capacity mod you can get 120 more inventory space that's pretty awesome i don't use any inventory space perks and this is how i go around appalachia and carry as much as i want Something else that I think every player should know in Fallout 76 is about some emergency locations for basic resources. For example, for wood, go here at Sylvie and Sons logging camp because it's by far the best location in game to get wood. You can get, I think, about 200 wood, especially if you go ahead and use the luck park called Wood Chunker, which duplicates the amount of wood you can uh, gather it's pretty handy for steel you can go to blackwater mine and instead of farming an entire facility or killing robots you can just come here where you usually do the uranium fever event and check these uh, green boxes now the servers haven't been very buggy but they always spawn here from four to eight steel in each box there are five boxes in here and this is usually where I come to get my free steel. They take 24 hours to spawn back, but don't get surprised if things are a little bit buggy for you as well. 
If you need some rubber, then head to Grafton to the high school. It's the best location to find it without any effort at all. You only have to go there and pick up all the basketball and kickballs you can find. They are usually in two containers. And as the previous one, I was bugged. I tried three servers and I swear I didn't pick them up for a while. But the containers were empty. I can show you though that the kickball and the basketball drops three rubber each. It's an excellent place to get rubber. I think it's the best one in game as well. For plastic, I usually go to the Watauga High School. It's a bit bothersome when it's filled with enemies. I just rush in and start collecting all the plastic I can find in the tables, on the floor. Also, don't forget to check the kitchen. It's called the cafeteria. And there's more plastic inside as well as some rooms upstairs with more plates, spoons and so on. Don't forget to check the floor because sometimes it's a bloody mess in here when you have to fight. For some reason, a lot of people think that under armors are some sort of costume under your real armor, but that's not really the case. There are many mods out there that can give you defense or even attributes to add to your under armor. For example, I have this Brotherhood office suit. I added the protective mod, but that's not good enough for me. I was not so happy with the defense only. So I got some mods for my Vault 76 jumpsuit and look at the attributes that you can get. Mmm, shiny. So I ended up going with the shielded one because it gives me strength, endurance, intelligence, luck, and that's a lot to pass on. Just remind yourself, if you are using Under Armors just for the looks, stop it and get some more benefits out of it. When it comes to armor, I've seen several discussions about what type of armor is the best, what should you pick, and so on. Well, honestly, you can heavily mod almost, I, I think, any type of armor. You just need to get mods. For example, for combat armor, it has been my favorite for many months now. And that's because the basic defense is crap. It's about 60 on the chest piece. But if you mod it with the Brotherhood mod, you can get 86 defense. That's pretty good. And you can do this for every other piece of the set and you can do this for any other armor type. You just need to search how to get the mods and then get the materials to mod your gear. And then you will get a much stronger result. Trust me, it works that way and that's what you should be doing right now. There is a very clever way to learn as many mods as you want by scrapping a gear. All you have to do is kill enemies and collect their gear. It has to be normal gear as obvious. You cannot scrap a legendary gear. So a good idea is to go to an area with lots of enemies and some workbenches. You can actually do this in a workshop when you have the defense event going on. Just collect all their weapons or armor, you can also scrap it. And then you'll see that you'll start earning a decent amount of mods if you haven't really scrapped that type of gear before. That's handy because it means that you don't have to just find and buy mods from vendors, you can actually self-learn them. Another question that I get often is what kind of weapons are the best in the game right now? I can tell you it's bloodied weapons with all the certainty in the world because I don't think there is any other prefix that can give you about 1k damage per blow. In melee weapons that's very evident. You can easily get 1k damage when you are running a very low HP build and you can stack your defenses with unwielding armor which makes you very strong you just need to understand how to play with low hp but overall you can want to hit everything as you can see in the examples i'm providing right here only dead claws and yagwais are a little bit difficult for me i take two to three hits sometimes 
Cheap squatches are a pain in the ass, I need to go inside power armor, but besides that, everything is pretty much one hit from my part. Did you know that you can farm almost any type of ammo without having to head to your tinker bench and use a bunch of materials to craft the bullets you need? That's right. You only need to head to the workshop Converted Munitions Factory, power it up and then decide what ammo you want to farm. But you should only do this if you are playing for a decent amount of time. Otherwise, you will be just wasting your own resources by powering it up and defending the workshop. Why? Because it takes a while for the workshop to produce the ammo you want. It doesn't matter which one. It's quite slow, so it's only viable if you are playing for a while in the same server. Don't forget that if you disconnect or server jump, you will lose your workshop and your ammo. Don't forget to lock the machine, otherwise other players can come by and steal your ammo. But that's great information for you. I usually farm my shotgun shells in here and it's pretty handy. This point is something that I feel most people don't know or they just ignore because I keep getting comments asking me how do I get so many caps. Actually, I have been full caps for like two weeks now and that's mostly from my player vending machine. But look guys, you can get up to a thousand in 400 caps per day by simply selling things you don't want or need. And now it's even easier because you only need to head to one single vendor. The daily cap has been merged, which means you only need to kill enemies, gather uh, scrap, aid items, weapons, anything that could be sold. And that's it. Make money, farm caps, and you will get there soon enough. I added this point for two different reasons. Number one, when it comes to old players, some of them are not really aware of this because this feature was introduced with the Wild Appalachia DLC and you can now find all the factions in White Spring. The robots have been added with the old robots, the residents that were here all along. And for new players, this might be really confusing because there are so many robots in here now and you might not realize that some of them are actually from the different seven factions that exist in Appalachia. Another point that I feel it generates a lot of confusion is how the legendary script system works. First of all, you can head to these yellow-orange machines which are present in almost every station out there in Appalachia and sell all the legendary items that you don't want or need. You will get scrip instead of caps. It's like the currency for legendaries now. And once you are done doing this and you have a decent amount of scrip, you can head to Berkeley Springs Station where you will be able to find the legendary vendor and then it's up to you to decide what item you want to roll. The results are completely random and you could get a really good weapon or a completely useless one. The stats are random. Everything is pretty much random. The only thing you can choose is the rarity, the stars of your legendary item. If you don't like your results, you can simply go back to the machines and scrape them back. So there's nothing much to lose here if you think about it. Pacifying and taming animals is something that players who are in Fallout 76 for a while know about, but new players might find this very strange and curious because it's not something usual. But it is true, you can pacify about any animal. Your chances depend on the level of your perk and on your level as well. It's very easy to pacify animals, but to tame them, it's another story. You need to follow a... Um, extensive range of rules like you need to have enough budget in your base and you need to pick an animal that is in a random spot it cannot be a fixed one so it's not so easy but here's the information of what it's possible to do Something that I feel most players don't know about is how Fallout 76 offers you such 
an immersive experience. There are so many random spawns out there that actually I don't know about. I have just realized there are over 10 random spots uh, for this kind of event in the Cranberry Bog. I have recently released a guide with different random event spawn locations as well as what you can expect in every single one. Feel free to check it out, I'm posting the link up there, but there are many others in other regions of Appalachia. I haven't discovered them yet, but it's really funny and exciting when you get somewhere and you see something that is really not usual, like this bomb that generally explodes if you don't get the right wire. If you do, like in this case, you will get rewarded with a bunch of squirt atoms, which is again unusual but exciting, at least for me. So guys, keep this in mind, there are many random events out there for you to explore. I want to finish this tips and tricks video with something that almost no one really knows about, which is you can create a small camp in workshops and then you can turn them into blueprints. Now the blueprint budget is quite small compared to your camp budget, but you can still create a decent amount of things. For nuclear winter, this is amazing because as you know, you need to have a blueprint to place a pre-existing building there, otherwise you have to build everything from scratch and that's not really possible when you are fighting uh, dozens of other people. So if your camp budget is full, claim a workshop and start building. Just keep in mind that the budget for a blueprint is quite short, so stay to the simple side of things to the essentials. I know, I know, this video has been a little bit longer than usual, but I really hope you were able to learn something new because that's my goal with this type of videos. I always enjoy when I can help you guys to improve and do better in Fallout 76. Which one was your favorite tip or trick in this video? Do let me know in the comment section below what you think I missed. I'm sure I missed something, but I will let you do that for me. I'm Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching until this point. As usual, if you are new to the channel and you enjoyed the content, then would you please uh, subscribe to help me grow? Mm? Thank you in advance. Also, I have a Patreon page, so if anyone would like to support me further, feel free to check the tiers that I have there. That's going to be everything for this video. Thank you once again for all your support, and I will see you very soon in the next video. Adios! Bye-bye.